What impact does spending an additional $1,000 per month have on your retirement nest egg? Hi, I'm Garrett Ray, financial planner here at The Wealth Guardians and The Ray Financial Group. And I'm Bryce Payne, and you've entered The Vault, The Wealth Guardians video series on all things pertaining to retirement planning. In this quick episode of The Vault, we're going to run a case scenario of Joe and Sally Client. Joe and Sally Client are uh, favorites of ours. We use them all the time. And what <laughs> yes, we're going to we do. do is go over all the pertinent details of them under two scenarios. One, if they spend $4,000 a month in retirement, and what does their nest egg look like at age 95 under that scenario? And then go over all the details again, changing one element. They now increase their spending to $5,000 a month. What difference does that make in the size of their nest egg at age 95? See these little like and subscribe buttons down below the screen there. Feel free to hit those if you want to catch future episodes of The Vault with Doug Garrett and myself moving forward. Other than that, Garrett, let's go ahead and get started on it. Tell us what we need to know about Joe and Sally Client. Let's throw the details up here on the board for yeah, our so viewers to see. Let's dig into the case here. So Joe and Sally Client, they are both the same age and their target retirement age is age 66. They have a gross social security income at age 70, because that's the age that they're electing to file, of around $5,000 per month. We're gonna assume a 2% cost of living adjustment each and every year in retirement on that benefit. As far as investable assets at the start of their retirement, they have $1.191 million. We're going to assume a 5% rate of return on those assets. And as far as their spending, they have $4,000 per month, as Bryce previously mentioned, of expenses. And we have to tack on inflation there. So we're going to use the 100-year historical average of 3.27% inflation. That puts them in the 22% federal tax bracket with an effective tax rate of 12.51%. And if we're going to use a target age of 95 towards the end of their retirement, that means that their nest egg, uh, with all those parameters involved, they would be left with $3.251 million at the end of retirement. But what about the other scenario? What if they spent that additional $1,000 a month? Price? Yeah, let's say Joe and Sally client, for whatever reason, want to live a little bit more and they want to yeah, lavish everything. gifts on their grandkids and uh, travel a little bit more in country, whatever. So they come to us and they say, hey, Bryce and Garrett, we really want to spend a little bit more in retirement. We don't want to spend $4,000 a month. We want to spend $5,000 a month. Well, we're financial planners. That's what we're here for. That's what we do for our clients. So our client comes to us. We've got the answer. So we go to our trusty software and we change that one element. So let's throw this back up on the board now. All the elements here are the same with the exception of what you see bolded. It now says $5,000 a month. Yeah. Everything else is the same. And what do we have as a difference here, Garrett? Well, if you look down at that, again, that target age of 95 towards the end of their retirement, we see that their nest egg has fallen from 3.251 million down to 2.261 million. So while it doesn't seem like a lot when you're, when you're in the process of spending that money, oh, it's just an additional $1,000 a month. Well, that equated to $990,000 less than you would have otherwise had in your nest egg. Now, that may or may not make a difference depending on the client. Um, but if they did have strong legacy goals, perhaps, maybe that spending matters to you. If, on the other hand, on the flip side of the coin, if you want to live a little, there's nothing wrong with leaving a $2.261 million nest egg to your loved ones. Sure. But it's just helping folks out there understand, you know, these are the types of variables that we constantly have questions about from our clients and ways that we help solve some of these things. And so I think it it's going to be a great fun series that we're going to go through. The, talk, Joe, and, the Joe and Sally client series. Exactly. Is and, start. Yeah. and going through on the vault series, some of the different variables that people ask us, you know, week in, week out. Hey, Bryce, Garrett, Doug, can you take a look at this for me? What if we change the inflation rate? We're going to run a vault series on that. What yep. if we change the cost of living adjustment on Social Security from 2% down to 1.5? We're going to run a number of different variables in this. But I do want to make you aware that Joe and Sally client never had to touch the principal 
of their investments. When mm -hmm. they were taking out that, uh, that spending money a month, whatever Social Security didn't cover, that was only dipping into the growth of their investments. So if we started the same scenario again, but with somebody who was only going into retirement with $500,000 a month, as opposed to $1.1 million a month, they're gonna be touching the principal of their accounts at a certain point, and it's gonna have a lot bigger effect than just $990,000. That's a great point. Right, yep. so, so we have to keep in mind what was the nest egg that we were starting off with in the first place. Anyway, I think that covers it for this uh, first Joe and Sally client episode. Again, don't forget to hit these little like and subscribe buttons down below if you're so inclined to catch future episodes with us. And I want to remind you, create a financial plan as if your retirement depended on it. I'm Bryce Payne. And I'm Garrett Ray. And this has been The Vault.